love that Sweet Home Alabama. That was my kind of music. Thank you guys. That was wonderful. But I, um, I just can't believe the year's over already. It's, it's just seemed like it's flown by. And we, uh, we've had so many good things happen this year. I want to congratulate Provo Provost Dr. Ron Hawkins. Our academics have continued to excel, and we were just voted an R3 doctoral institution by the Carnegie Institute, which means we won't, we'll no longer be listed way down on the, near the bottom of the list with um, a U.S. News and World Report. We'll be in the top 7% of all schools everywhere. So that's, that's a huge... We'll be, list, we'll be listed as a national university. That'll help your degree mean a whole lot more to, to whoever you show it to when you go apply for a job, and it's, it's just a, a huge step forward for our university. We also had a great visit with SACS, the Southern Association of Colleges and Schools. On the team were uh, Ken Stark, president of Baylor University, um, Brad Creed, president of Campbell University. They were blown away by what they saw here, and they, they pretty much told us it was, it was a clean bill of health, and we, that's another 10-year reaffirmation. All this is great news for Liberty University. We continue to do a little construction, and we uh, apologize for that, but it's, it's getting close. And that, you know, most, how many of you are freshmen or sophomores? It'll be, the, the bulk of it'll be finished before you leave, especially <clears throat> if you flunk a few times. But it's, but it's uh, one of the things that we made a top priority is to build a new parking garage just like the one we have. It'll be located between between Towns Religion Hall and the, and the bookstore, and it'll be going up fast. So that, that's, in the meantime, we're gonna put a temporary lot over here, because we've heard from SGA about how bad the parking is for students, and we're moving a lot of freshmen off campus. With... <laughs> They're not here yet, so I can say that, but it's, it's, uh, we're going to park a lot of the freshmen over at the mall and um, bus them back and forth. And so you got, <laughs> so you guys are going to be a lot more comfortable next year, in spite of all the construction. And it's, um, what else is happening with, with the, the towers, three or four stories up for the School of Divinity? The, the student center is beautiful inside. I went through it the other day, and if you. Um, if you slip in right about 5.30 when the workers are leaving, you can get through it without anybody stopping you most days. So that's, that's what I do. And they haven't said anything about me not having a hard hat on yet. But the, uh, the bowling alley is almost finished in the bottom floor. And uh, what, am I, what am I forgetting? Anything else, Ryan? Um, Oh, the new indoor track is the steel's up for that. The um, what else? Is that it? Okay. Anyhow, we today. Um, I don't know whose idea it was, but I was at a, an event at Virginia University of Lynchburg earlier this week. It was an all-day event. Uh, the president over there, Kathy Franklin's a good friend of mine, and they were just. Uh, I was honored to be part of their uh, of their. Uh, of their event, and at, at that event, I met Charlita Mason. She's one of the candidates for city council here in Ward Three. This is Ward Three, and she told me that all all the counts, all the candidates were going to be here today. I didn't know it before she told me, but then I got a notice last night that I was supposed to introduce them. I got that email from David, so this is all news to me. But I'm excited that they're all going to be uh, just taking a few minutes to tell you what their vision is for Lynchburg. We have Al Billingsley, Jeff Helgelson, the incumbent. And so I'm gonna turn it over to them for a few minutes. And then we have got, we're gonna honor the teachers that you've told us that are your favorites. The, the, uh, we're gonna give the awards for, for teacher excellence. Is that what they're called? And they, um, we usually do it at commencement, but we figured, we figured that um, most of the students that sit under these professors are gone by commencement. By the way, you ought to stick around if you have a chance, because we got some, um, 
We've got some surprises that I think you'll find exciting at commencement, but I can't announce it yet. But it's it's. Uh, but we thought it would be better to honor the teachers while the students that they teach are still here. So I'm going to start with Charlita Mason, and uh, Charlita, welcome. Good morning. As I walked in, I looked around and I thought about one of my favorite Bible verses. And it's how good and how pleasant is it to see brothers and sisters dwell together in unity. So good morning and thank you for having me. My name is Charlita Mason and I'm seeking the city council seat in Ward 3. I'm from Lynchburg and I had the pleasure of watching Liberty open its doors and watch the vision grow from 10,000 students to being one of the finest universities in the country. I must say that I've studied and worked with presidents and chancellors all over the country and you guys are so fortunate. You've got a great guy like Jerry. Another special gem, and this is perfect since you're honoring favorite professors, I've had an opportunity to study at Liberty as well, and I have one. So if anybody knows J.J. Cole, please tell her that she rocks. She rocks. And she actually saved my life. I was a young widow four years ago when I was in her classroom, and her compassion and kindness really saved my life. So thank you, Professor Cole. I hope you're here, but if not, guys, please tell her. Now back to business. Since I am seeking the city council seat, I am going to urge you to do one of the things that I know that Liberty instills in you is to be good citizens and urge you to come out and vote. And I'm asking for your vote. I'm compassionate and passionate about education and I will work diligently to improve the state of our educational system and I will also work to make sure that Lynchburg continues to be a great place to work, live, and play. <laughs> Lastly, I know that this is the last convocation for many of you, and as an educator at heart, I have to speak to that for just a moment. For you, the bright future is ahead of you, and I know that for whom much is given, much is required. Take advantage of the opportunities that you've been given and, and afforded from being able to study at this great university and go out into the world and do great things. Don't forget to vote on May 3rd, and please consider making me your next city council person for Ward 3. Thank you so much. Good morning. Good morning. How are y'all doing? This has been fun. Thank you for letting me be a part of this. I enjoyed that music. Uh, my name is Albert Billingsley. I'm not originally from Lynchburg. I'm from Kansas, and I've seen a few. I've seen a few Kansas uh, cars around here. So I appreciate the opportunity to come and share this morning. I just wanted to let you know that I've heard you've got a pretty big week coming up next week. Is that right? Finals? Yeah, I know. It's one of those evils. But we got a pretty big week next week, too. Tuesday is Election Day. Uh, I'm running for City Council Ward 3, which includes Liberty University. And I've had the pleasure of being here in Lynchburg since 1986 when I came to take a job at BMW. I don't know if you know for sure the impact that you all have on the city of Lynchburg. Um, even for, from me, from my campaign, uh, Rimzo, my campaign manager, Juliana is a photographer, uh, there's, there are, uh, Nicholas was doing a video for me, several other volunteers, so it's, you, you touch more areas than you realize. Last week, CASA, the, uh, court appointed special advocates, a, board that I sit on, I was volunteering at their ladies' night out fundraiser. And uh, Megan, an intern who goes to school here, was a driving force with that, as well as uh, Becca and also Leanne, <clears throat> excuse me, Leanne. So 
you touch areas outside the university. And when I take my dog, which is a therapy dog, to Lynchburg General Hospital, I see nursing students around through there. So yeah, you, you are literally throughout the city, you touch more areas than you realize. And next week, you have another opportunity to be a part of, of Lynchburg and to have an influence and an impact on this city by coming out to vote. Doesn't take long, really it doesn't. They're pretty efficient at it anymore. So I would encourage you to get out and vote, whether it's for me or one of the other candidates. Right now, to me, that's irrelevant. What saddens me most of all is that you, I pick up the paper the next day and see only 20% of the registered voters voted. That's, that's really disappointing. And you all can make a big difference in that because you represent a big voting block in this ward. I have uh, tried for the last couple of months to, to try to put into words what I'd like to see uh, Lynchburg be in the next few years. And what I want to bring to the table is positive leadership. I want to make sure that our public schools are in good condition and, and uh, kept going. I want to make it easier for small businesses and, and businesses in general to do business. I know a lot of people, once they've graduated from here, tend to stay and start their own business. I want to make it easier for you to do that because it helps the city and it helps you and it helps everybody wins. So thank you very much for your time this morning. Enjoy your, the rest of your day. Good luck next week and God bless. Well, good morning. I'm so glad to be here and thank you for letting us come and speak. I moved here 30 years ago from Minnesota to study finance, got some good Minnesotans, to study finance and wrestle for liberty. After I got my first degree, I stuck around and got my MBA here as well. So I started here as a wrestler, and 30 years later, I'm still fighting for liberty, now as your member on Lynchburg City Council. You like voting on campus? You used to not be able to. You used to have to go clear across town to vote. I fought against that. I fought for your rights to vote right here on campus, and now you get to vote right down there at the Vine Center next Tuesday. You like guns? You used to have to get fingerprints to get a concealed weapon permit. I fought against that. You don't have to do it anymore. Don't you hate having to pay 11.5% tax on your pizza? Just recently, they proposed raising that tax even higher. I fought it, and it didn't happen. And I'm the only vote on city council to reduce it. Do you like all these new buildings on campus? Liberty used to have to get special permission from the city it caused delays, and it costs a lot of money. Isn't that right, Jerry? I fought that. Now it's easier for Liberty to expand this campus and grow the university. They say you can't fight City Hall, but I do it all the time, and I'm doing it for you. But there's something else. You like having a graduate of Liberty University on Fox News, Shannon Bream? I do too. You like having a graduate in the music industries, Mike Tate and Toby McKeon? They're doormates of mine. I like that too. You like having a graduate of Liberty win Miss Virginia, Courtney Garrett? Me too. You like rooting for a Liberty graduate in the NFL, Rashad Jennings? Me too. You like having a Liberty graduate on the ESPN uh, college game day, Samantha Ponder? Me too. You like having the, a graduate of Liberty as the president of Concerned Women for America, Penny Nance? Me too. Well, if you like having a... Uh, would you like to have a graduate of Liberty University to be your city councilman on Lynchburg? 
That's me. And if you like having a Republican member on City Council, I'm the only Republican on Lynchburg City Council. It's good for Liberty's reputation to have graduates as leaders in business, in entertainment, in sports, and in industry. It's good to have people in government who understand the needs of this university. I love Liberty. I want to keep fighting for you and for this school. So thank you for your vote for Jeff Helgeson next Tuesday. You'll see some of our palm cards with lots of your student endorsements, lots of the faculty endorsements. And I got to say thank you for Cecil Kramer for teaching me speech class many years ago. Appreciate your vote on Tuesday. God bless you all. Thank you. Hey, uh, let's thank Jeff and all the council people for just coming, all the candidates. Come on, put your hands together for them. Great job. Um, I think this is a, a real special moment for us as we look back on the year and we get to celebrate uh, just all of our faculty. Uh, I think they should all be rewarded for just an incredible job that they do day in, day out. But uh, at this time, our provost is going to come and uh, just make a special presentation to us. Can I just say this? We call him our provost, but he's really a shepherd-hearted pastor. Can we just give it up for Dr. Hawkins? Come on, everybody. Hey, thank you so much. What an amazing privilege I have to lead over 3,000 faculty who teach for us in residence and online. And I know that you appreciate the, the teachers that you've had throughout your experience here. And today we want to recognize just some of them, three of them in particular, with the President's Award for Excellence in Teaching. This is the sixth year that we have given this award. But before we do that, teaching is at the heart of what we do here at this university. And I know many of you have had an amazing experience with the teachers you've had in class. So we're gonna recognize three today, but would you give it up for all of the teachers across the university that you love and who love you? I know they have been the cause of great joy and great pain for you, and uh, you're glad for every moment of it, and they are too. Today we honor three of these outstanding faculty members, uh, and as I said, this is the President's Award. This is the President saying to all of our faculty, we love you, we appreciate you, and we recognize the value that you bring to our university. So it's with great pleasure today that I present to you the 2015-2016 recipients of the President's Award for Excellence in Teaching. Our first awardee is Cynthia Ann Goodrich from the School of Nursing. I want to say some nice things as she's coming, and that we not only give her a certificate, but she gets a little money too, so both of those are very important. But uh, she has been a member of the faculty of the School of Nursing for a long, long time. And she has worked extensively with the honors program and, and hooking faculty and students up together. She's always looking for ways to improve the student experience both in and out of the classroom and is a member of a stellar faculty in our School of Nursing, Dr. Cindy Gunrich. Dr. Cindy? Our second recipient is Hannah Lorraine Schultz. Uh, she is, teaches in our undergraduate online, and students say this about her. She is hard but fair. She is demanding but kind. And one student said, I had a real crisis in my family, and Professor Schultz prayed for my family and myself. It was a comfort knowing that my college professor was not only concerned about me learning, but was concerned about what was going on in my family and concerned enough to pray. So Hannah Lorraine Schultz is our second recipient. And then from a department that everybody loves uh, and loves to just take, and that's English, learning how to write. Our third recipient is Dr. Matthew Tolles. Uh, 
He wants to give all the credit for everything he has become to his mother, who is seated over here, <laughs> and who is glad to take credit for that, and is very surprised with how Matt has turned out. But uh, we hear this from his students. His passion for language and literature is evident at all times, and his love for God and his students signs, shines through. He engages his students fully pushing them to think critically and deeply and to hone their writing skills. So Matthew, Dr. Matthew Tolles, wonderful to have you as our third. <laughs> Faculty tell me this every day. We have a wonderful group of students. We appreciate your passion for learning. And as we heard this morning, many of you go out and make a wonderful contribution, not only to our community, but to our world as well. And if you're going to be prepared to do that, you have to take your education seriously. Our teachers take it seriously. Thank you for taking it seriously. Wonderful to honor a few of them today. Thank you. Hey, at this time, uh, I want to take just a minute to tell you a little bit about some of the folks that we've already confirmed. Can I just say that we have an, an amazing roster of uh, leaders that are going to come and be a part of Convocation with us next year. Some of those folks are not confirmed yet, so we don't want to announce them. But I can tell you who we've already uh, lined up for 100 percent to be with us next year. Uh, just a few of them are Joe Theismann, the uh, NFL legend, is going to be with us. Many of you were at Passion last year and uh, at Christmas time, and you know that uh, one of the most prophetic words that was delivered there is a fast rising new voice, uh, a pastor and an author by, Levi, by the name of Levi Lusco. Levi is going to be with us. Um, many of you love Brian Welch, the founder of the band Corn. He's going to be with us. It's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, there it is. Political talk show host Armstrong Williams is going to join us. That's going to be a whole lot of fun uh, having him with us. Um, Pastor Stephen Furtick is going to come and he's going to bring Elevation Band with him. So we're excited about that. Uh, Chris Broussard was supposed to be with us last semester. We had snow that day, but ESPN analyst Chris Broussard is going to join us. He's always. Uh, controversial to say the least and a whole lot of fun. And then, uh, of course, Tim Hawkins was with us last year, but yeah. <laughs> um, I know we had fun when he was here, but let me just say this. He had so much fun when he was here that he contacted us and said, can I come back and record my next album live at Liberty University? So we're going to get to do that. It's going to be a whole lot of fun. Last confirmation uh, that I know we're going to have is now this is a tradition. Last year we did it for the first time. This year we just did it today. But uh, last but not least, oh yeah, Steve Forbes is going to be with us from Forbes magazine. And All right. Hey, last, uh, last but not least, I know that one other person that's going to join us last, next year uh, will be uh, President Falwell, because every year we're going to end our time with just a few minutes with him. Are you not grateful to have his leadership, he and Becky, and the way that they lead us? Put your hands together for President Falwell. I, um, first of all, I want to encourage you to please not forget to come out. First of all, don't, don't forget to come out and vote on Tuesday. We worked hard to get a precinct here in the Vine Center, and it won't take but a few minutes. But while I was sitting back here just now, I got a text from Charity Tilly, who's my, my wife's niece. She's my wife's niece. She's standing. Stand up, Charity. Where are you back there? But she said, she said, Jerry, um, Uncle Jerry, she said, why don't you tell some funny stories to end up the school year about your time at Liberty? And I thought, well, that could be interesting. You know, I thought about the one where um, a friend of mine who works here now and I went down to Treasure Island. Back in those days, Liberty had dorms and all of our football team practiced on Treasure Island and it was a farm down there and there were chickens and, and other animals. So we, we went down there, grabbed a chicken. I, I caught it, by the way. And we brought it up here to campus, put on ski masks, 
and threw the chicken in the cafeteria. We thought it was an innocent, innocent prank. Everybody would just run around, but it, it landed on the neck of, a, of a, kid, a student who had just had surgery on his neck. And <laughs> it, it, thank God it didn't do any damage, but, um, but that was, yeah, pretty bad luck. But anyway, <laughs> but, the, but the funniest story was we, I showed up for my second year here, dorm six. There was four people assigned, four people assigned to the rooms back then. And the four names were up on the board and uh, in the room, and one of them was a kid named Jim Rich. And so we thought, okay, well, we'll sign him that bunk. And so we, we started the school year, and this guy never showed up, but his name was still up there. And back in those days, every person in a room was assigned some sort of job, like vacuuming the floor or cleaning the sink. Do you still have that? Yeah. So we would give him we started giving him every one of those jobs every day. And so he would, he would get written up, and he'd start, getting, he'd start getting notices from the dean's office to come in. He was in trouble. And I told the RD, who was a friend of mine, what we were doing so it wouldn't be completely dishonest. So anyway, the RAs were, were coming in at night. Where is he? He's never here. And so we spun some big yarn about, well, he works all night at Kmart buffing floors. And, and he's, he's really struggling hard. He has a tough family life. He's, so they, they, started having, they started having prayer meetings for him. Uh, and we, we even described exactly what he looked like. And the RAs came into my room one day and he said, I saw him in, con in chapel today, but I couldn't get over to him, so he spotted him. So that's how good our, that's how good our description was. But he, he kept getting in worse and worse trouble, reprimands, and he wasn't even here. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> and so finally, the RD, who was Ed Gomes, we told Ed, we better, you know, we can't let this go on forever. So Ed called the RAs in and told him it was just a prank. And so, but you, I, I can't even, well, some of the stories that we, that we made up about him, it really, it really made people sympathetic for his situation. So I can't, I can't repeat all those right now, but, but, uh, but anyway, I, I, that's, that's how I'm gonna end the school year this year. Just, just a couple of stories, and it's thanks to Charity, and she's single, by the way.